everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you another mixed media collage for my hashtag 100 days project. And this one is day 57, um, almost the end of March, getting close to the end of March, and um, a little over halfway through. And of course, it's going to be a mixed media collage. I decided to pick out a 4x4 flat panel canvas for this. And I had these leftover bits and I, I just, I wanted to use them. They're the reverse. In fact, this whole collage is kind of about reverse. <laughs> They're the reverse of when I cut out some leaves the other day when I was doing a bird in a nest collage and I had folded over the paper and then cut out the leaf shapes. And these are the bits that are left over. And I just, I don't like to waste stuff. And I think that, that the opposite image is just as, as interesting as, you know, the positive image. So I decided to use these for my background today. Had a couple other green pieces that were just laying around. So I put on a couple um, green sections of something and then I'm gluing these leftover opposite leaves over the top of them and around them and just creating interesting shapes in my background here. I know there's going to be other layers over the top of this so I'm not really really fussy. I just thought that the shapes were interesting and I'm tearing off any um, hard edges like unless I put it right in the corner or against the edge of the canvas I, I tear away any of those edges that would be really straight you know and it's just kind of fun it's uh different and weird and just adding a bunch of green to my background in leftover pieces a couple of these that i put on there are also from die cuts when i die cut out some like little stems with a big die cutting machine i had the you know the leftover edges the leftover edges are interesting i i particularly like the leftovers from die cutting a strip of an alphabet when you're like trying to get a word but you've got to cut the whole alphabet because the die has the entire alphabet on it and I like the leftover parts after all the the alphabet is punched out and I like to like tear them in half so that you can't so they're not so identifiable as you know the the outsides of letters but more just kind of random weird shapes those are really fun to me i use i use them quite a bit in uh, abstract collage so then there was some uh, canvas still showing and i decided to just fill in those white spots with these king art gel sticks because it's quick and i can just um, kind of fill in the crevices of the canvas the texture of the canvas with that really super quickly so I grabbed a few of those yellow and a couple different greens and now I have this and it's very green and I'm thinking maybe I would like to unify it a little bit and so I decided to glaze over the top of it with one of these ice ink um, ice is it called ice yeah, I think it's called ice glazes it's just a, a transparent kind of a sticky um, medium glaze that you know just kind of makes everything one color you know but it's translucent it's it's see-through and so it's really more toning the colors than it is covering anything up because it doesn't cover anything up it just kind of makes everything more yellow I guess so then I'm thinking what is this exactly it kind of looks like a forest or jungle floor background with all the different leaf shapes and some sunshine kind of trying to shine through and so I was kind of thinking about that sort of a scene and then the green 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 so much green made me think of frogs so I decided to have a little canvas of a couple frogs that are sitting under a mushroom having a talk or something um, maybe one of them is comforting the other one because they don't look very happy <laughs> One of them looks a lot more happy than the other one. So you'll see as the as the illustration gets done here what I'm talking about. So 
I'm kind of thinking maybe the one is comforting the other one. Maybe the other one has, is having a bad froggy day, whatever kind of bad day happens for frogs. Maybe the, the global warming is causing their pond to dry up and they're upset about it. I don't know. So I took some other pieces, a couple uh, pieces of orange and a piece of this very uh, patterned uh, light brown and dark brown. And I made a stalk and then I also made kind of the under area out of some uh, printed tissue that had some uh, kind of, I don't know, light tan on it. And then the orange, orangey ready color for the cap. And then I decided to do the frogs. I just, I wanted to use the green that was in the background because it's all this green and it just, it looks like frog to me. So I decided to do what I call exclusion painting, which I think a lot of people call reverse painting, where instead of painting a image, you are painting the opposite of the image. So you're painting the background out instead of, you know, painting on the frogs. And you'll see when I start to do that, I'm just drawing them lightly with a Stabilo All pencil um, just to get some lines. I know they're going to be an illustration. They're not going to be realistic. I want the shape of the frog and I want the green from the background to be what color they are. So I'm just kind of drawing a quick outline shape of kind of cartoony looking. You can tell they're frogs, but they're not realistic in any way, shape or form. Frogs wouldn't sit this way. <laughs> I think they mostly always sit on all four of their legs leaning forward. So then I got some white gesso and I just mixed it with some water from my squirt bottle. And I took a little brush and I'm painting the outside of everything. So around the mushroom, around the frogs and pushing back that bright green background so that the frogs stand forward. And I'm using a baby wipe to make sure that I can uh, make that white gesso. I don't want to obliterate the pattern. I like having it shine through. I just want it to be less. So the gesso just helps with um, making it less distinct. Doesn't, doesn't scream at you as much. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. It's still there, but it's subtle. It's, it's, it's a secret. It's kind of a secret. It's whispering. <laughs> so that's what gesso mixed with water and then, and then uh, pounced off with a baby wipe will do for you. So you can still see it. There's still those leaf shapes and things in the background, but now you, you can see the mushroom and the frogs coming forward, but the composition was off and you still needed something on the other side. And I thought, well, if frogs were going to sit around and have a chat, they'd probably sit under things. And I should have maybe made the mushroom top wider, but instead I just decided to throw a leaf on there because maybe a leaf from another plant um, is up over, you know, it's, it's over the top of their heads too, to, to shade them from the sun or the rain or whatever's happening. I also took some of this very bright green scrap and I cut it in little thin strips and made some kind of grass uh, to fill in a little bit and uh, gluing all that down. All my collage today was done with Liquitex matte gel medium. Um, it's the thicker of the matte mediums that I like to use and I didn't really worry about what types of paper I had today. I just glued it all down with that and a small brush. So I'm gluing on all those little grassy things and the leaf. And that brings some of that green back to the foreground again because I glued another piece of paper on there. And this is a weird little fun collage, you know, that you might do on a spring day, thinking about green things, I guess, and, and little froggies in the forest or something. I don't know. <laughs> These things just come to me. I don't know how to explain it. It's just what happens. 
So once all that is glued down, I'm going to give it another dry and then I will be doing some detailing uh, with the illustration and things like that. So got to get that good and dry so I don't ruin any of my different pens. I decided to use my um, pocket brush pen from Pentel, which has a flexible brush that can go from thick to thin lines. This one has got India ink in it, which is permanent when dry. And so it's a good choice for mixed media if you don't know that you're going to put, whether or not you're going to put another layer over the top. It's, a, it's one of my favorites. I love this pen. And I am actually going around the lines of everything on the frogs and illustrating, um, making it, you know, a line drawing more. So they really do stand out from the background and you're not distracted by all the other pattern in the background. I maybe should have done this before I put the grass on because the grass is kind of getting in my way. Because <laughs> I did put a couple of the pieces over them. I'm also going to draw around the mushroom and the leaf to make everything in the composition balanced because it doesn't look right without having the illustration lines on those two. And also putting in a little bit of detail onto the leaf and the mushroom top of course needs dots. Seems to me like those toadstool type mushrooms have dots. I'm not sure I've ever seen one in real life. I've seen a lot of different type of mushrooms, but I'm not sure I've ever seen one of these classic looking red top white dot ones before in real life. But I think they're poisonous, so I probably wouldn't want to um, mess around with them too much anyway. <laughs> I'm also putting some little freckles and just little different things on the illustration just for fun. Make it a little bit more interesting. And then I'm getting out my white Posca pen, which is acrylic paint, a very opaque uh, white pen and filling in the dots on the mushrooms, adding some catch lights, uh, maybe a few little highlights here and there with that. That's the fine tip Posca pin. And I wanted to add an edge to all the grass. So I got out a green acrylic paint pin from Posca, which also is a fine tip. And I'm just kind of going along the edge of the grass and maybe filling in a little bit of the leaf with it. And it ha you have a, a couple seconds to smear it. If you don't want it to have a hard line, you can smear it. So I sometimes do that with my finger. So I hope you're enjoying this little mixed media collage canvas. Um, I'm trying to keep up with doing all 100. I've, I've skipped another couple days again, which I think I'm gonna go in my studio this afternoon and make them up because I don't think I have any responsibilities. I've already put uh, dinner into the crock pot to cook, so I should be able to escape to the studio this Sunday afternoon and maybe make a couple more pieces for the two days that I skipped. I just, yeah. 100 days is a lot. That's all I had to say, but I'm doing it. I'm going to get all the way through eventually, even if I have to make up a couple times. I did add a couple, a uh, little bit more of that uh, gel stick and smear that around a little bit, um, colored in the bottom of the, where the frogs and mushroom are sitting. I don't like things to be floating. I like them to be grounded. And I added some cheekers, some pink cheeks to the frogs. I think they're pretty cute. You know, maybe a little bit different than usual, but kind of fun. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.